working out modeling distant pointing for compensating systematic displacements. There you go. Thank you for your introduction and welcome to my talk about middle modeling distant pointing. I will present you the work that I have done with my colleagues, Katrin Wolf, Stefan Schneegers, and Niels Hensel. So let's first start with a little experiment. I want you, you to point with your right hand onto the target and then close your left eye and explore where you're actually pointing. So follow your arm and now did you all get the middle of the target? <coughs> so isn't this surprising? Also, we already start in our early childhood to express ourselves via pointing gestures. And <coughs> later in our lives, we combine speed and pointing gestures to determine specific objects and places. The idea of distant pointing in an interactive system is already proposed by Bolt in 1980. He proposed, he proposed a media room where you can interact <laughs> by using speech and pointing gestures. The proposed system div, did give feedback in that way that the cursor represents the pointing position. So how do we enable computers to determine on which object you're pointing? Therefore, the computer needs an underlying understanding of the human pointing behavior. Therefore, we think the computer needs a model, and we built this model. Therefore, we collected user data with an experiment. Here you see the setup with the 7 by 5 grid targets where the participants had to point to. So the procedure was that the participant had to point with their right arm onto the target, confirm with the left hand on the presenter, and then hold for one second. After this second, the point disappears and they had to move on to the next point. And that way, only one target was visible at the time. Uh, we did not instruct the participants to point in a specific behavior. So we invited 12 participants, six of them were male and they were all right-handed. We, we run the study and with four conditions. Three and two meter distance from the wall while sitting and standing. So the participants had to point three times at each target in each condition. So we ended up with a total number of 420 targets per participants and the target was randomized. While the experiment was running, we observed the participants by a motion tracking system with 17 cameras, and the system runs with the highest accuracy, with, which is within millimeters. We attached markers to the participants in that way that we afterwards can calculate three different ray casting types. So the first ray casting type was forearm ray casting. Therefore, we used two markers at the elbow and two at the wrist. The average distance between the intersection point of the ray cast and the target was roughly three meter. And the lower right, you can see the graph showing you the 35 targets represented by the red cross and the corresponding intersection point represents by the black dots. You can see an overall systematic displacement between the targets and the intersection points. The second ray casting technique was eye finger ray casting. Therefore, we used the two head markers and the one at the index fingertip. The displacement between the intersection point and the target was 58 centimeters. It was the lowest. You also can see the systematic displacement between the targets and intersection points. As the third technique, we used index finger ray casting. Therefore, we used two markers at the in index finger. The displacement was 61 <coughs> centimeters and the standard deviation was 29 centimeters. The standard deviation was the lowest in this technique. We can also see, like in the previous two techniques, the systematic displacement. In the analysis, we saw that the displacement is larger when standing further away from the well. 
from the wall. To overcome this problem, we used angles instead of the actual displacement to get <coughs> a distance invariance model. We fitted the data onto four different functions. One was a one-dimensional model and th three two-dimensional models. <coughs> to evaluate the models, we used leave one out cross-validation. Already with the linear model, we had the improvements for all four functions. The best compensation was when using index finger ray casting with a two-dimensional polynome. The, improve the improvements was 37 centimeters uh, percent. Sorry. The here you can see the displacement <coughs> for the four conditions. The yellow bars showed the displacement without the model and the green bars with the model. So <coughs> to conclude, we ran an experiment to collect data and we calculated different models. So already the linear model had an improvement for the distant pointing and the smallest distance was when using eye finger ray casting and the best improvements we had when using index finger ray casting. <coughs> so thank you for your attention and I'm happy to answer your questions. Does anybody have any questions? I know that was a lot of information in a very short amount of time, <laughs> but I think you did well. Any questions? So, uh, so my question really was, uh, how do you see people kind of using what you've presented here to, to help them in their, in their work? Uh, are you providing a kind of a static implementation of an adjustment algorithm? Oh, yeah, right. We have, in the paper, we have the formulas with the values for, to use them all. And, right. and that should just apply to right. any other interaction. That's pretty right. interesting. Okay. No more questions, anyone? Uh, one question. So have you studied this technique with the distance, like how far the distance the user stands, how it interacts with the techniques? Uh, the, the model is distant invariant. So we, did we do not know, uh, need to know the distance between the object and the participant to get the I guess the my question direction. is that on this technique at different distance, that how the performance varies. Well, anyway. Didn't get the question, sorry. We had That's some okay. we, we, can, we can say that one offline. Um, okay. No more questions? No, great. Let's uh, thank our speaker again.